Hey everyone, it's Jess and today I wanted to make a video on how to care for the Calathea white fusion which is this plant right here. So this is actually one of the first houseplants that I got when I first began my houseplant uh, plant parent journey about two years ago. So it's, she's actually quite small for a plant that I've had for two years and one of the reasons for that is because at the beginning I just had a lot of difficulty with her because Calatheas, particularly uh, white fusions, are notorious for being quite fussy and in fact there were a number of times where I thought you know what she's not going to make it so um, but she's proven me wrong and um, she's she's looking quite good for a plant that uh, I've actually dare I say neglect quite a lot and um, that is actually the secret to her flourishing although I don't I don't recommend it to everyone that's not going to be one of the tips she's got a few crispy bits and the crispy bits the end here are actually due to water damage and what I mean by water damage is there's just been a lot of water or moisture on her leaves this hasn't had the chance to dry out which is causes the leaf to sort of rot a bit and that's something I'll go into in terms of troubleshooting or care tips uh, for your calathea so guys I know calatheas I know the white fusion is actually somewhat or definitely when I first started getting into the house plant about two years ago it was definitely one of the more popular plants it's still a beautiful plant but um, it's not as popular as I think um, it once was the reasons why I thought I'd do a care video is because I'm getting back into doing some painting and then I noticed that the calathea, this particular calathea, has got some beautiful leaves that actually look like it's been um, painted with watercolour. So I was sort of inspired by her to do a care video. And, I haven't, and also because I haven't done a care video in a while. In the calathea family, they're well known for their beautiful foliage and somewhat sometimes they can be quite fussy. Calatheas are also a great house plant because they're pet friendly so they're not toxic and because of their foliage they provide a very beautiful sort of statement piece for your home. So that's why calatheas can be quite popular. So guys as you may know with my care views I like to do a bit of history for a plant just so we can learn a little bit about its background, where it comes from, it's not a cultivar. I think it helps frame the care tips for looking after your plant. As I, as you may know, as you know already, this is a Calathea white fusion. It is a member of the Calathea family or the Marante family. So that's the family of prayer plants. And the prayer plants are those plants where at night their leaves close up and then during the morning they open back again like you're doing a prayer. Calatheas are plants that are native to the tropical parts of the Americas, so normally the northern part of South America. Now this Calathea in particular, this is a cultivar, so what that means is it's actually been selectively bred, so it's not naturally occurring in, in, in the wild. It's got some beautiful white as well as some green foliage it does look like watercolor and then beneath underneath the plant it's got these sort of purpley pink underside which sometimes the color leaks into the the stem so it's definitely a very beautiful plant when you look when you have it in the sunlight it does look like there's a bit of purple or pink that comes through the plant which i think it's so beautiful so guys getting into the care tips. The first thing I'd start off is with lighting. Now, calatheas, if you have one, they do not like bright direct light. If they are in bright direct light, they will shrivel up and die, <laughs> um, essentially. So, so you want to keep them in a place where it gets diffused light or indirect light, and that's normally where the light is still bright but it doesn't get direct sunlight onto it. So don't find the sunniest side, the sunniest part of your apartment or home to put your calathea in because it won't do, it's not going to be that happy. A way to create diffuse light though, is if you have a window and you put some, if you have some sort of semi-transparent, I don't know if transparent is the right word, but um, if you have some curtains, which can let some light through, that is perfect lighting this plant. Calatheas generally can tolerate some shade 
but don't put this plant in in full shade because it's not going to be too happy one of the reasons why lighting is important is because it does have an impact on its foliage so the more bright direct light it has what happens to the foliage it, it becomes quite washed out and you don't get that vibrancy versus if it doesn't get enough light so it's in too shady of location the patterns and the markings on the foliage don't actually come through so you're not going to get that beautiful foliage that you probably got this plant for the more light this plant has and with light i am referring to indirect diffuse light the more white you're going to be able to get on your plant and that's because the plant has enough of the green that it can afford to give give you more white in the plant so the more bright indirect light you give to the plant the more white it's going to have so i keep my plant sort of underneath the veranda and it doesn't get any direct light during the day it's always sort of in the shade um, but the area is quite bright so light does come through which is why i think she's giving me a lot of white um, foliage the next tip I have is in terms of soil. So we know that Calatheas like to live in quite well draining soil. In fact, root rot is a big uh, is a big concern for Calatheas. I've got I've got my plant in sort of standard potting mix, but I've put a lot of perlite or pumice through the mix to make it quite well draining. Don't I don't recommend using orchid bark because orchid bark retains a lot of moisture and also I've moved away from using I know I've just mentioned perlite as a medium to to put through your potting mix to make it more aerated. I've started to use pumice and that's because from a sort of a health a health perspective um, perlite has a lot of that fine dusting which is not good for your lungs if you inhale too much whereas pumice i find it has less of that fine dust that comes with the product so i've definitely i've moved to using some pumice um, in terms of repotting for this plant i haven't repotted her yet you can see that in the bottom of the plant her roots are starting to come out so that is a sign that i need to repot her now the pot that i'm going to put her in is only going to be slightly bigger and that's because calathees tend to like to be a little bit more root bound now watering it really depends on where you put this plant so if you put it in a place where it's near you say near a window where the soil is going to dry out a lot quicker because it's got a lot more aeration in which case you need to water the plant a little bit more versus if you're keeping it in an area where it's a little bit more shade the soil takes a little bit longer to dry out you might want water it less so for my plant i keep her outside and the soil is going to dry out every three days or so in summer definitely it dries out a lot quicker so I have to water her a lot more but in winter I water her every three to four days when you water you always want to water all your plants until you can see the water draining out from the bottom of the pot and that's that's a good way to encourage strong and healthy roots because you're encouraging the roots to really be long a big tip for watering is water using rainwater if you can or used filtered water so this is probably my number one tip i found that that actually really helps with helping her grow a lot quicker but also being more healthy so the next tip i have for everyone is to keep your plant in a well aerated environment so you want to definitely keep her in a place where that she's going to get some fresh air don't keep her in a corner where the air is stagnant because that actually promotes rot in her roots as well as on the leaves um, i know i mentioned at the beginning that um, my plant had a bit of crispy bits which is attributed to having too much moisture or wetness sitting on or water sitting on the leaf and not having enough time for that to dry out. Calatheas, whilst they enjoy high humidity, you can't have the plant saturated or in water or having too much moisture around or on the plant because what that does, it encourages rot because if it has too much water sitting on its leaves, it will start to, the, the leaves will start to go all mucky and yucky and start to rot. So that's why one of the biggest tips I have 
for is to have your calathea in an area where it gets a lot of airflow, where the leaves, where any water on the leaves has a chance to dry out. And I think that's one of the big lessons I've learned. The other tip I have is to always prune your plant or look out for when there's dead leaves around, particularly around the bottom of the plant. Because the calathea leaves are actually quite delicate and quite thin, it actually can rot quite quickly. And what you don't want is you don't want a lot of moisture around the stem of the plant because that's just going to encourage rot. Another thing I might touch on is temperature and humidity for this plant. Temperature, you know what guys, I've read a lot online about making sure this plant is kept in temperatures between 18 degrees to say 27 degrees. So that's looking at really temperate temperatures. But I, I actually kept my plant um, outdoors over the Sydney winter where it can get temperatures of say six degrees and she hasn't died on me yet but that might be a reason why um, she's a quite a small plant for a plant that I've had for two years if you did keep her indoors she's probably going to be a lot more happier and grow a lot more quicker if you have a plant that's smaller than this I don't recommend keeping her outside keep her in those temperatures between 18 to 27 degrees because your plant is too small too young and not strong enough to withstand those temperatures but I definitely find that once your plant starts to mature and um, grow a bit more it can be more tolerant to colder temperatures so I wouldn't worry too much well that's the same for humidity and I've read tips around needing to have quite high humidity I'll Generally, Sydney um, has a humidity of about 60%. I don't do anything else to give her humidity, which is, might be another reason why she's still so small. But I find that she does do fine in a um, with lower humidity, so you don't need to go and buy a humidifier. The last bit of the video that I wanted to cover was troubleshooting your plant, particularly if you have calatheas and a white fusion. I touched on early in the video is around leaf curl. There's a bit of wetness to it and the leaf sort of turns a little bit translucent. That is a sign where there's either too much watering or the water hasn't evaporated from the leaf so much. The other bit is where you've had too much sunlight and there's browning on your leaves. When you touch those leaves, um, when you touch those browns bit, those are very crispy and can break quite easily. The other scenario is where particularly the tips of your plant start to turn yellow or there's a bit of or it's also accompanied by black spots that is a sign that you've overwatered your plant too much and so you might want to check on its roots to ensure that no root rot has developed if there's no root rot that's a good sign but then i would hold off watering till the soil has dried out before you water again you are keeping your calathea in a more humid environment and particularly one where airflow is not as much or a little bit more stagnant look out for fungus gnats because they love that type of environment to get rid of those fungus gnats what you will do is you spray them with some soapy water so that's mixing a bit of soap with water and spraying it on the plants putting your plant outdoors or where it can get some sunlight and fresh air and that will help get rid of the fungus gnats. In terms of pests, aside from fungus gnats, this plant doesn't really have many pests. Although by keeping her outside, I do notice that sometimes caterpillars like to munch on her leaves, but there's not many pests. So guys, I hope you I, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some tips from this video. I had a lot of near-death experiences with her and just got to a point where I was just selecting her because I didn't think she'd make it. But then she's bounced back and she's a fighter. And um, ever since I started paying a little bit more attention to her, she's a lot less fussier to manage. Um, but guys, if you do have any questions when, with regards to Calafia, white fusion care please let me know i'll be happy to respond to them otherwise i hope you have a good hope you're having a good week it's freezing in sydney um and i'll see you in my next video bye